beloved jazz DJ by day, courageous crime fighter by night, it's time once more for the adventures of Jimmy Jazzoid, DJ Detective. At the conclusion of last week's episode, we heard the evilly banal Dr. Smooth Jay say, Hey, Jazzoid, at last the path is clear for activation of the Blandatron, the apparatus by which all music automatically converts to my kind of relaxing, smooth, extruded music-like sound product. Your grand plan to make all bands bland shall not stand. Not while I'm alive, Smooth Jay. Funny you should mention that, Gumshoe. Since you're clamped by those titanium bands welded to the inside of the elevator, and when the doors close, the cable will snap, and two dozen starving wharf rats will drop in as you plunge 45 stories to the basement. Enjoy the dinner and the elevator music before the sudden stop, Seamus, going down. Oh, no! Not Kenny G! No, I do want to die! Whoa, 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 whoa! Can our DJ detective possibly survive? Stay tuned to find out. Support for Jimmy Jazzoid comes from the folks at the Toxic Black Sludge Company for all your toxic black sludge needs. And the Terrell Corporation, manufacturing state-of-the-art replicants for both domestic and off-planet applications. Terrell, more human than human. We continue now with the further adventures of Jimmy Jazzoid, DJ Detective. As you recall, when last we saw Jimmy, he was welded into a runway elevator filled with starving wharf rats, maddened to carnivorous rage by Dr. Smooth Jay's diabolical music, and hurtling at blinding speed toward utter obliteration. Do I? Well, after Jimmy escaped from the elevator, <laughs> he went directly to his favorite watering hole, and it's there we find him posing a chronological query to Louie, the lovable bartender at the Dark Night of the Soul Club. Say, kid, what time is it? Ah, you know, Mr. Jazzoid, here in the Dark Night of the Soul Club, it's always three o'clock in the morning. <laughs> Hiya, Jimmy. Ah, well, if it isn't my favorite floozy, Moistella Culatello. Buy a doxia drinky? Louie, a triple for the trollop. Check. Thanks for the extra dollop. So, Jimmy, how come you and me never, you know, got together? Sorry, Slattern, but I spend my spare time with my model airplanes. Jimmy, I can be way more fun than that. Yeah, but I can hang model airplanes from my bedroom ceiling. That's no problem. I'd love to hang from your... Oh, hi, Greta. Are you singing tonight? Sure am. And, uh, Jimmy, I couldn't help but overhear what Moistella's been saying to you, and I have to agree. You know, Jimmy, you could have a great career. And I should. Yes, you should. Only one thing stops you, dear. You're too good. I'm too good. If you want a future, darling, why don't you get a pass? Cause this fateful moment's coming at last. We're all alone, no chaperone can get our number. The world's in slobber, let's misbehave. There's something wild about you, child, that's so contagious. Let's be outrageous, let's misbehave. When Adam won Eve's hand, he wouldn't stand for teasing. He couldn't stand for all those apples out of season. They say that spring means just one thing for little lovebirds. We're not above birds, let's misbehave. It's getting late, and while I wait, my poor heart aches on. Why keep the brakes on? Let's misbehave. 
I feel quite sure a furthermore would be attractive. While we're still active, let's misbehave. You know my heart is true when you say you for me care. I'm sure someone will tell, but what the heck do we care? They say that bears have love affairs and even camels. We're only mammals. Let's misbehave. Let's misbehave. Let's misbehave. Let's misbehave. Jimmy, how's about you and me and a bottle of champagne? Wait a minute, it's turn that up. It's 3 o'clock in the morning. I'm Dave Meyer, KPLU News. The Navy's nuclear-powered aircraft carrier, USS DeGroot, has nosed into port, and after eight long months at sea, over 5,000 young, vigorous, and lonely sailors with money burning holes in their pockets are in town and looking for a good time. And the time now is still 3 o'clock in the morning. Eight In other months news, at yada, sea, yada, yada, yada. time for yada, some yada. naval maneuvers. Anchors away, my boy. <laughs> Farewell, my lovely. Ah, she walks by night. Every night. Uh, uh, Jimmy, I, I think you got a visitor. Your name, Jazzoid? Maybe. Who are you? Name's Bruno. Danger, Jazzoid. Terrible danger to the city. The espresso tax is going up? It's the Birdman. Only you can stop him. Is he dead, Jimmy? Dead as a man with a big fat beak can be, Louie. Oh, geez, Jimmy, his schnoz ain't that spectacular. Yeah, but this beak's in his back. Ooh, deep. Ooh. How'd you like to have one of those full of nickels, Louie? What a dis Speakable way to go. I guess I better call the cops, huh? Yeah, I want to report a murder. A uh, murder by Birdbeak. Me? I'm Louis the bartender at the Dark Knight of the Soul Club. Time of death? <laughs> Three o'clock in the morning. What else? <laughs> Looks like a long dark night, Mr. Jazzoid. And you're going to need to stay alight. How about one of my, my triple tall, low fat, high virtue, marshmallow caramel lingonberry latte molokai mochas made with fair trade, grown in the shade, clean green beans picked by happy, well fed, picturesque peasants who only do it for the healthful exercise that they find so pleasant. Sorry, Louie, but I boycott that kind of shameful exploitation. <laughs> Besides, there's a bird boy in Ballard, professor, name of Falcone, who just might have an angle on all this. Give me that beak. I gotta see a man about a bird. We'll return to Jimmy's quest for the perpetrator of the giant death beak in just a moment. Support for Jimmy Jazzoid comes from Space Case Era, from the Klaxon family of uh, Sparmaceuticals. Space Case Era for vague symptoms that something isn't quite right and just might get worse. <laughs> Side effects may include slow motion visions of beaches, meadows, sunsets, and catastrophic asteroid impacts. Do not swive or absquatulate the scenery while taking Space Case Era. Space Case Era, it may be just what you didn't know you were looking for. We rejoin Jimmy now, powering his mighty jazzmobile toward the royal roost of noted bird maven Franklin Falcone, for whom he hopes to obtain vital information about the mystery of the giant death beak. Man, the traffic's really jammed for this time of night. Maybe there's something about it on the radio. You'll be tapping on the brakes southbound on the O'Shaughnessy Bridge at and all over town. We're getting reports of congealed caca that's contributing to congested conditions as it falls all over the Seattle windshields, causing multiple mishaps and a farrago of fender benders. UW ornithologists are baffled by what they're calling the white rain and report these baseball-sized dropping deposits appear to have come from a previously unknown species of giant bird. This check on traffic is provided by Large Bob's Lardball Express. Adam Gerke, 885 KPLU. (laughs) 
Hmm. First the giant death beak, and now these double dip bird blasts. Coincidence? Well. <laughs> Maybe not. That must have been some big bird, and me, with an empty washer reservoir. Ah, here we are, a two-story birdhouse on the corner of Sydney and Green Streets. And a bird's head for a doorbell button. Mr. Jazzoid, welcome to my humble nest. I've been expecting you. You knew I was coming? Of course. What with the recent ornithological developments being reported on the radio, I, I knew it would be only a matter of time before the famous DJ detective would come to seek my expert... Will you knock it off? As I was saying, and don't make me come down there. They've been under a lot of stress lately. And now, Mr. Jazzoid, may I offer you some uh, nuts or grubs? <laughs> Something to drink. A bottle of avian water, perhaps? No, thanks. But could you take a gander at this beak? Oh, my, but that is a magnificent mandible. I must confess I can't quite place it. Where did you find this? Broken off about eight inches into a guy's back. Ooh, that is distressing. I would hate to think that any of my, I mean, our feathered friends could be capable of such... Frankie! Frankie, the news is all over the... Oh, e excuse me, Professor Falcone. I didn't realize you had company. Oh, my dear. Mr. Jazzoid, may I present April, my, uh, uh, research assistant. Pleased to meet you, I'm sure. April has given up a promising career as an interpretive dancer to assist me in my work. Wait a second. You're not. April showers and... And her amazing trained voice. Yeah, you caught my act? Well, uh, <clears throat> only that one time I happened to be passing by the theater and, uh, you know, I just dropped in to get out of the rain and... Uh, Say, how, how'd you ever get those birds to take off your, uh, I mean, you know, remove your... Well, well, the zippers were pretty easy. It was the hooks and eyes they had the most trouble with. But, but I taught their tweets, so once I explained <clears> to them... <throat> much I... as I hate to interrupt any discussion of Ms. Shower's former lurid profession... It was art, Frankie! Uh-huh. <laughs> well, I need to get a reference book from the laboratory, April, perhaps you would keep our guest company until I return. He's gone now. It's safe to talk. Mr. Jazzoid, you gotta stop him. He's insane! You mean he's out of sync with the reality-based community? <laughs> I mean he's nuttier than two oats and mice. A total whack job from way back. All this gridlock from the windshield bird bombs are happening on his orders so he can take over the city, and he's the one who beak-stabbed poor Bruno. But why? Because he knew too much, Mr. Jazzoid. And now I'm sorry to say, so do you. Frankie, no! Put down that beak! Step away from the Jazzoid, Sally. There's plenty of beak here for both of you. <laughs> Sally? I, I thought your name was April. It's a long story, Mr. Jazzoid. Very long. You see, Sally, or April, as you know her, is quite a bit older than she looks. Well, if you don't mind my asking, how old are you? I'm 29. Well, that seems a thousand about... years old. Is that in bird years? <laughs> Go ahead and tell him, Sally. It doesn't matter now. Well, Jimmy, my real name is Saholi Blue. I was born 20,000 years ago into the clan of the Cave Boyd, near the town your people call Kennewick. <laughs> Professor Falcone used his Calabi Yao temporal manifold matrix manipulator with Tacron Quantum Flux Flapper. Flux 
Flapper. Flux schm Yeah, well, anyway, he used it to snatch me right out of the cave and 29,000 years forward in time, my whole April showers gig was just to raise money for his nutball plan. So let me get this straight. You're a prehistoric cave woman, born and raised 29,000 years ago. Yeah. And you speak modern English with a Brooklyn accent. Yeah. What's your point, Jazzoid? Well, I just mean that it's just that... You know what, let's, let's just skip that. Um, what I really want to know is what you're up to, Professor. Oh, I'll explain it all to you, Jazzoid. But to prevent mischief, I think that would best be done under more confining circumstances. Let's adjourn to the aviary, you two Kennewick chick. You were useful to me because you could translate to the birds, but now you're expendable too. And no funny business. I've got a death beak here, and I'm not afraid to use it. Hi. Wally Neff here for KPLU Corporeal Contributions. <laughs> the kind of informative, inspirational, and educational programming you're listening to right now is made possible only with your support. That's why I'm asking you to consider extending that support just a little bit further by giving of yourself. The proceeds from the generous donation of one of your internal organs to KPLU <laughs> will help ensure that the quality broadcasting you've come to enjoy and depend on will continue, even if you don't, for many years to come. To learn how your insides can benefit KPLU, click on Give Till You Croak. And our grateful thanks. A mad professor with birds on the brain and a fistful of death beak, a paralyzed city in the grip of his fiendish plot, and a 29,000-year-old ex-stripper... Interpretive dancer. Uh, yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> what is Falcone's deranged scheme? Can Jimmy stop him in time to get back to the station for his record show? Let's find out as we continue with Act 6 of... Jimmy Jazzoid and the Death Beak of Ballard. You know, I love the sound of doves cooing in the aviary. It reminds me of, I don't know, cooing doves, I guess. <laughs> okay, Professor, you've got us where you want us. Now, what's this bird business all about? You know, the Greek philosopher Plato once said that Man is the biped without feathers. <laughs> now, my experiments have corrected that deficiency. But how could you? With a DNA retwirl atrometer, of course, I've been able to convert ordinary, boring, old, featherless, earthbound humans into a new super being. You mean there? Yes. Half man, half bird, murd. Together, we will rule Seattle, or at least Ballard. All right, Professor, I've heard enough. Who are you, really? Who am I? <laughs> I'll tell you who I am. I'm the recorded telemarketer you can't hang up on. I'm the teenager with a cell phone behind you at the movies. I am the Viagra spammer. <laughs> I'm the guy who starts the standing ovation. You mean you're... Pleased to meet you. Glad you guessed my name. Hoo hoo! Hoo hoo! So you are the Birdman. Duh. Yes, Jamesoid. Birds are my business, and business is good. Even now, my feathered followers have packed the house at your beloved Dark Knight of the Soul Club. Good evening, boys and gulls, and welcome to the Dark Night of the Soul Club. Hey, hey, if a seagull is a bird that lives near the sea, is a bird that lives near the bay a bagel? Hey, thank you. Uh, take my shrike, please. Hey, 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 waiters, there's a soup in my flies. Thank you, you're, you're beautiful. 
If you'd come earlier, you could have got the worm. Hey, I know you're out there. I can hear you breeding. But seriously, Spoonbills, you're a warbleful audience, and uh, I hope you have a pheasant evening. Now, this is the part of the show where I take requests, so if you like, even you two can make one. Rock and Robin! Okay, 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 okay. How about this one? How about this one? Hit it, boys. Pack up all my care and woe. Here I go, singing low. Bye, bye, blackbird. Where somebody waits for me, sugar sweet. So we see. Bye, bye, blackbird. No one here can love and understand me And oh, what hard luck stories they all hand me So make my bed, life the life I'll arrive late tonight Blackbird, blackbird, blackbird Bye-bye Oh, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Ah, that hidden transmitter I installed at the club worked perfectly. And so nice to hear my merds having such a fine feathered time before they fan out to seize the power station and coffee stands. You're crazy, Falcone. Yes, and I'm loving it! And once that little surprise I've prepared for you here begins, I guarantee you'll be in no position to stop me. Well, kiddos, I must fly. Please excuse me while I kiss the sky. Did he just say, kiss this guy? I thought it was Christmas pie. Hmm. Well, listen, April, uh, I mean, how do you say your real name again? Sally Boop. Sally Boop? No, no. So holy whoop. Sally Boop? No. So ho fine, right, Sally Boop, whatever. What what's that? Look, the walls, they're they're closing in. Oh, we gotta get out of here. I, I can't budge this door. There's only, only seconds left. We'll be crushed flatter than a fifth. Let me give it a try. Stand back, Jimmy. Ooh. Holy deconstruction, Sally. You ripped that steel door off its hinges with just your bare hands. Hey, Cave Goyle, remember? You should see what I can do with a wounded wildebeest. But Jimmy, how can we throw the kibosh on the professor's plan for world bird nation? I have an idea. Look, Falcone has all of his birds, his murds, watching the show at the Dark Night of the Soul Club right now, right? Right. So if we can corral him there, the plan goes no further, right? Right. But how? Well, this is going to sound crazy, but it might be just crazy enough to work. Can you meet me at the club with a flatbed truck fitted with a giant cage filled with 200 pounds of breadcrumbs and used fast food wrappers? No problem. I know a guy. Great. Now, here's my plan. First, we'll meet at the club with the bar. Quite a flock you got here, Louie. I always said this place was for the birds. Mr. Jazzoid, I'm so glad you're back. It's just been awful here. We got feathers everywhere. And what they leave for the waiters, oi! Chicken feed, huh? Worse, use chicken feed. We tried everything, but we can't get these birds to leave. Well, I just might be able to help you out with that one, Louis. <laughs> I'm here, Jimmy! As a matter of fact, I believe their ride has just arrived. Okay, Louis, make sure the front doors are wide open. Then stand back while I hit them up and move them out. You got it! Excuse me, excuse me. Does anyone know who left the 200 pounds of breadcrumbs and fast food wrappers out on that truck in the parking lot? Breadcrumbs and fast food wrappers? <laughs> My favorite! Gangway! 
They're out the door, and I'm right behind them. Oh, look at them, Jimmy. They're in the cage and pecking their little hearts out. Then all that's left to do is just throw that switch, Sally. What? This one here? No, no, the big red one. Got it. Bye-bye, birdies. Well, 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 if it isn't Captain or Paul House of Seattle's finest. Good morning, Captain. Good morning, son. Still meddling in police business, I see. And you're still arriving late for the party. Long line at the donut shop, huh? <laughs> well, don't worry, Cap. These birds have reached the cage stage. All right, Jazoid. The police department will take it from here. And may I offer the thanks of the grateful city? My pleasure, Captain. But there is still the matter of Professor Falcone, the birdman. Ah, sure, don't you be worrying about him now. We found what was left of him at the zoo. We think he must have lost our speed flying over the lion cage and fell in and... Uh, oh, you don't mean... Yes, devoured by cats, I'm afraid. It's the way he would have wanted to go. Meow, wow, wow, meow, wow, wow, meow. Well, Sally, looks like our work is done here. What do you say to a couple of drinks and some nice raw antelope? Oh, Jimmy, you're the greatest. And a few weeks later, in our nation's capital. This thing on? <clears throat> Now, the hearing will come to order. Senator Marty Marmo presiding. First of all, Mr. Jazzoid, on behalf of the committee, I'd like to thank you for agreeing to testify before the committee today. And from me personally for that fine set of golf clubs and Miss <laughs> Coolatella's phone number. Come see me later. I think I can help you on that other matter. My pleasure, Senator. Now then! <clears throat> I say now then! We've all read the news accounts of your triumph over the deaf beak plot of Professor Falcone, and I'd just like to say that I and the committee commend you, I say commend you as a great American. Well, that's very nice of you, Senator, but the credit really should go to my associate, Ms. Sally Boop. Ms. Boop, you say? I don't believe I've heard anything about a Ms. Boop. Who's she? Who is Sally Boop? Well. Sally Boop, 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 Sally Boop, 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 Boop. Well, there's a gal in the daily papers we all know. Sally Boop, 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 Boop. She lived way back a long time ago. Sally Boop, 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 Boop. She don't eat nothing but a bear cat soup. Sally Boop, Boop. Well, this gal's name is a uh, Sally Boop. Sally Boop, 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 Boop. She got a chauffeur that's a genuine dinosaur. Sally Boop, 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 Boop. And she can knuckle your head before you count to four. Sally Boop, 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 Boop. She got a big ugly club and a head full of hair. Sally Boop. Boop. Like great big lions and grizzly bears. Sally boop, 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 boop. Sally boop. She's the toughest chick there is alive. Sally boop. Wears clothes from a white cat's hide. Sally boop. She's the queen of the jungle jive. Look at that cave girl go. Ow! Rides through the jungle tearing limbs off a tree. Sally boop. Knocking great big monsters dead on their knees. Sally boop, 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 boop. The cats don't bugger cause they know better. Sally boop, 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 boop. Cause she's a mean motor scooter and a fair go getter. Sally boop, 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 boop. Sally boop. She's the toughest chick there is alive. Sally boop. Wears clothes from a white cat's hide. Sally boop. She's the queen of the jungle jive. Look at that cave girl go. Ow! There she goes. She sure is hip, ain't she? Like 
what's happening? Hi ho, dinosaur. Ride, Sally, ride. Sally, Sally, You've just thrilled to another adventure from the files of Jimmy Jazzoid, DJ Detective. The parts of Jimmy and Wally Neff were played by Dick Stein. Rich Germain as Smooth Jay. Adam Gurky as himself, Bruno, and Captain Polhouse. Robin Lloyd, who had entirely too much fun at Value Village, as Moisella Colatella. The part of Sally Boop was played by Paige Hansen. And as Louie the bartender, Senator Marmo, and Frankie Falcone, Frank Corrado. With Greta Matassa. And the vocal stylings of the fabulous Fender Skirts, Diane, Ginny, and Keiichi. Live sound effects by Ken Zick. <laughs> Broadcast engineering and sound mix by John Kessler. Technical direction by Lowell Kiso. Engineering support by Nick Winter. Thanks to Felix Bennell and the Museum of History and Industry and KPLU's Joey Cohen. This KPLU production of Jimmy Jazzoid and the Death Beak of Ballard was written, produced, and directed by Dick Stein. And I'm your announcer, Paul Herlinger.